and welcome back. And we are moving into our second segment for this morning as we focus on the work being done at the Mercy Clinic. Of course, uh, I was joking with you all that it's our neighbors. So we have to check in every now and again. And uh, we have with us on set Anita Zatina, who's the chairperson for uh, the Mercy Clinic. In the middle, we have Andre O'Brien, who is the director. And on the end, we have Dr. Natalia Rodriguez, who is uh, with NHI for the Social Security Board. Good morning and welcome and thank you for being here. Good, Good morning. morning. Good morning. Okay. So I know there are some programmatic changes that we'll be discussing so everybody can know what they can expect from uh, the clinic. But before we move into that, uh, I find that this is one of those institutions that have been quietly working and uh, continuing to meet a very important need in this uh, country. So let, let's go back into the history of the Mercy Clinic. Andre? Yeah, um, thank you for having us. Uh, Mercy Clinic started in 1958 mm -hmm. by the Sisters of Mercy Belize chapter. Yeah. Um, and over the years, it's been serving the, it started off serving the elderly poor um, of Belize City. Yeah. Um, fast forward to 2009, mm -hmm. um, we formed an alliance with NHI yeah. in order to make the program more sustainable um, and give it longevity. Um, and with the contract, we started serving uh, elderly persons, regardless of your background or financial um, status, mm -hmm. uh, medical, um, to the medical facility, 65 years and older, Southside Belize City. Mm -hmm. We're now expanded, and we've been expanding over the last 10 years, mm -hmm. to include Belize District. Mm -hmm. um, we moved from 65 to 60, and now we're at 59 years old targeting a population that is just transitioning into that elderly six years old. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, the clinic, uh, when it first got started, it was a kitchen first, right? It was mostly food. No, or it was always it was, food, it was and, always, food and health It was always care. just um, health care first in 1958. And in the 1970s, oh. they branched off um, to the offering a meal to the patients that were getting um, the medical attention as a way to balance off their nutrition and in medications yeah. that they were taking for uh, if they were suffering from hypertension or diabetes. Yeah. How many people do you serve now? I mean, what's the try? Sometimes I, I, I see so many people coming into the yeah. clinic. We, I, I really wonder. Right, uh -huh. we're, we have a registered population of over 2,000 wow. and climbing. Wow. Um, on an average, we serve about, uh, I believe, 30 or 35 patients per day. Mm -hmm. hmm. Now, Anita, from uh, the board standpoint, sustainability is key in any organization. Um, and we always use the reference that, you know, when you're soliciting funds or trying to get programs established for children, it's a little bit easier than working with older populations. Is that the case? Indeed. Um, and we are happy that the Sisters of Mercy in their wisdom realize that they're all getting older in Belize mm -hmm. and we don't have any new entrance into mm -hmm. the Sisters of Mercy. Um, and so they were very open to engaging in partnership with NHI in, in 2009, mm -hmm. um, at which point we then branched into the Mercy Clinic mm -hmm. and the Mercy Kitchen then remained open um, as a total ministry of the Sisters of Mercy while the Mercy Clinic was in partnership with the Sisters of Mercy. But as mm -hmm. time goes by, um, we are now totally um, managed by a board. The mm -hmm. Mercy Clinic is. We continue to promote the values mm -hmm. of the Sisters of Mercy, although we are more um, independent from them now. We, yeah. we are more in terms of a business partnership with them because we rent their premises. Yeah. Um, and indeed, it is harder to raise funds for the elderly, but we've been blessed with the support of NHI um, to take over the, the, the Mercy Clinic and yeah. provide the funding to, to reach um, the elderly population and yeah. seeking to expand and become that um, very important clinic specialized yeah. for, for the elderly. Um, as time has gone on, um, the Sisters of Mercy also conducted an evaluation of the of the kitchen part mm -hmm. um, because we saw numbers dwindling in terms of the people who would come to the kitchen for a meal um, and so 
in the evaluation, it was recommended that perhaps the kitchen should continue the homebound um, feeding program or nutritional program, um, and rather than um, focusing on the ones that were coming to the okay. to the kitchen. Homebound, and as in like a delivery service. Yes, it's like a okay. meals on it's wheels. A yeah. Meals on wheels. Okay. Um, we have about fifty people mm -hmm. that the kitchen served um, on that end, and so. Um, because of the need for more space by the clinic mm -hmm. and based on the recommendations from the evaluation, the sisters decided that they were going to honor our request mm -hmm. because the request did come from us to allow us to use more space and that we would then embrace the nutritional program for the homebound, mm -hmm. not necessarily providing meals at the, yeah. at the venue where we, we are. Um, that does not um, take us away from actually having a little corner with uh, some very light snacks for people who have to come into the clinic to do blood tests or whatever and didn't have any breakfast. But the actual preparation of meals will not be happening um, at the premises of the okay. Mercy Kitchen. But the area in which the kitchen was would now t um, be used to address the other areas of service like the um, physiotherapy that mm -hmm. we're adding. Um, we now have on board a, a case worker who would then be working with the patients as well as the nutrition, the homebound okay. to see what their situation is and particularly in terms of adhering to medication because you know with older persons that becomes sometimes an issue so the case worker will help us with that. So in expanding um, we're expanding not only the services, but we're also seeking to expand the, um, the numbers of all the persons that can access the clinic yeah. at this time. So there was a little concern out there in terms of what's happening mm -hmm. um, with the kitchen and the clinic. And people, people are, expect, are already accustomed to coming in and getting food. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, very few, yeah. very yeah. few. But I think the message out there was that the whole place was closing and we didn't want people to oh. get that idea so we thought it's best we come and clarify yeah. um, the clinic is not closing um, we're it's expanding, expanding rather <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're expanding we're expanding the services the numbers yeah. um, and we are continuing the homebound um, yeah. feeding program or nutritional program because we're one of the recommendations of the evaluation was to to um, make it more nutritional and ensure that we know what the condition of those persons are so that meals are prepared based mm -hmm. on their nutritional needs. Yeah. Dr. Rodriguez, this, what the Mercy Clinic has done, I think, and, and we don't say it enough, is really focus on an area that is underserved. There's Health Page, there's the National Aging Council, but when it comes to, our, to geriatric care or caring for older people, that has this is the only example of a specified space for older persons um, I'd imagine that made it such a natural fit for NHI tell us what the experience has been like so far as you rightly mentioned this um, geriatric model is new it's mm -hmm. real it's new for Belize it's even new for the Caribbean I would say and um, we, we need to showcase our our experiences that we've had our challenges we don't do it enough mm -hmm. honestly and this is why we're here today to to really promote all the great things that have been happening over the last nine years mm -hmm. um, in addition to that um, right now we are embracing an active um, registration campaign mm -hmm. along with um, with mercy and the reason is we're serving 2,000 people to make the clinic more sustainable because the cost of the elderly is almost twice the cost of a patient going to another PCP. Why is that? It's, it's because of the, um, most of them have comorbidities, which you know, nobody walks in with just diabetes. Some have diabetes and got asthma, or then got diabetes, hypertension, heart disease. Okay. At the, it's just the age group okay. that we serve, so that is one. And along with this, you have the support services as well mm -hmm. to, to complement the, the adequate management of your chronic patients. Yeah. So you have labs, you have imaging, and pharmacy. Mm. Pharmacy is always the one that miss. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that Tina mentioned, and this yeah. was why we saw it as utmost important to get the social worker involved. Yeah. We would find cases, and Andre can attest to that, that when the, fa um, the, um, the family member passes, they will come to Mercy with a whole bag of medication. And, and this has a cost, this has a major yeah. cost. And um, also, you know, within that age group, people start to forget. Yeah. And if you don't have the proper support at home, you might not be taking your medications mm. as should. So looking at all these um, contributing factors, we decided that it was important to get the social worker. Mm -hmm. So this social worker is called a case manager mm -hmm. and he is tasked with going along initially and orienting himself to each member that they visit out there, even the special cases that doctors might identify that come in house. Uh -huh. He will be able to visit the, those homes because sometimes it needs for the social worker to go in to, to come back with recommendations on how yeah. we can support our patients better at Mercy. Yeah. So that is one of the areas. The other area is physiotherapy because you know we have... This the, is new, right? The, this is the, a new the, area. The yeah. arthritic um, patients and also with age, the joints, they seize up mm -hmm. and, and all of this. So getting a physiotherapist on board is, is important as well to, to teach them to do maybe initial exercises you might have the cases at home that can no longer ambulate. They will need another level of, of physiotherapy. Mm -hmm. So it's, all, it's to incorporate all of these yeah. new services in to make it more comprehensive for the elderly. Yeah. Now, currently the Mercy Clinic, as we, as we said before, serves the entire Belize district. But what is, what is our, our elderly population? from what we know so far? From the last census that was done, it was, um, they were more. showing 6,000 plus. Yeah. But we yeah. believe that that number has increased yeah. to maybe um, over 9,000 yeah. plus. And every from day our, is increasing. Our yeah, yeah. yeah. And from our calculations. Yeah. One of the things that we need to stress on as well is when, it, when we're looking at the new, another new era for us of taking yeah. over the feeding nutrition program, yeah. Meals on Wheels to the homebound persons, is that we have, um, linked with a certified nutritionist mm -hmm. in geriatrics. Oh, wow. So she, she has a, her she qualification has in, 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 in that area. So she, um, we met with her and, and we have been having ongoing meetings mm -hmm. for the last three months in order to prepare for this change coming. Yeah. And this change takes effect um, August 1st, mm -hmm. Wednesday. Wednesday. So <laughs> we're gonna be serving our first um, our meals first set of meals. meals. But the meals are, are, are portion controls, yeah. low salt, no sugar. We're taking everything into consideration. And as time goes by, we're going to be tailoring the menu to fit an individual need. Yeah. Um, so what, what is a geriatric diet? What, what, are, what are the nutritional <laughs> changes that you're looking at? I hear you. No, no salt, less salt, less sugar. Right. Mm -hmm. um, what else are we talking about? So there? we're looking at healthy fats, um, uh -huh. low starch. Mm -hmm. low carbs um, we're, we're making sure that they have fruits, the and fruits or veggies yeah. um, instead of giving fried it's it's more grilled or yeah. baked items um, you know Belizeans tend to, to love their food with a lot of gravy so it's like mm -hmm. no gravy a lot of rice <laughs> yes. So we're changing from white rice to brown rice, okay. things like that. Mm -hmm. Instead of using Irish potatoes, we're using um, sweet potatoes, things like that yeah. we're looking at. Yeah. Andre, you, you, you're in the clinic and you see uh, the, the clients come in on a day-to-day -day basis. There are unique challenges to this age group. One, mobility. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, means, uh, two, um, depending on how old they are, their mental capacity, as you're talking about forgetfulness, but there's also a bit of, of, of what we call stubbornness, just in general. And a resistance to change, I should say. You've been eating rice and gravy for your whole life, and now at 70, you want to tell me, I can't have it anymore. How right. do you overcome <laughs> these issues? These, these, I don't know if you call them side issues of, of the population or just challenges of the population. Right. Um, we see that every day, not only in the feeding. I, I know we're seeing that, but in the this, medication yeah. area. <laughs> Um, being there for over 10 years, we have learned, and the entire team has learned to adapt yeah. and to, to, 
to work with patients and try and explain to them and educate them on their level. Okay. Um, patients that are suffering from some sort of dementia or so forth that requires a family member to come in, then we, we, we educate that family member. And what we try to do is not tell them when you need to change your whole pantry to, to accommodate that older person, but maybe make the, the meals a little bit healthier mm -hmm. using stuff that is already there for that person. And also for themselves, I mean, try to make yourself healthier I mean, if, you're, if your grandma eat um, brown rice with some sweet potatoes and big fish, then you can eat that as well, but yeah. you can also add something else on the side for yourself. Um, it's very challenging, and I don't think that is something that we're going to ever overcome, and yeah. it's not going to be any easier so for us. Progress, of definitely. course, mm -hmm. of course. And also to, to say that we do have patients that are seen at home as well from the clinic perspective. Right. Oh. Um, so we have an outreach doctor and nurse Mm -hmm. that go out to different patients that are not able to come into the clinic. Yeah. So within that amount of 2,000, we have about how many of those? We have about 50. There, it averages between 50 and 60 mm -hmm. persons. And I just would want to interject into this. This is one of the main reasons when I, I meet 59-year-olds and I said, you know, there's an opportunity now to consider that you could be registered at Mercy. They said, no, man, I'm too young for that. I know I've got a Mercy yet. <laughs> I said, yeah, in you know, a yeah. 10, 15 years, you know, <laughs> happy you made that mercy. <laughs> but nevertheless, it's, it's that it's right now, you can ambulate at 59. What do you mean by ambulate? Go to the clinic freely, okay. drive yourself. Yeah. And, but with time, that is one of the major challenges. Yeah. Some of our elderly, they live on the second floor. There's no way of getting them down and yeah. out, you yeah. know? And, and also the fact that when they reach that, some the end stage as well, you have at least the support of a team yeah. going to your home once a month, yeah. which, is, which is so important that nobody else offers. Yeah. So that is so important. There is though, however, I must stress, because I don't want after the show, Andre gets bombarded with all these <laughs> outreach home house, visit yeah. requests. We um, we have worked along with the team in designing a criteria. Yeah. There is a criteria. Because yeah. I know every now and then I get a lead call that they want the doctor visit and then I would say no. Unfortunately, and just kids don't want to drive. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. and, and that sort of thing, yeah. right? So it's important mm -hmm. to, to mention that apart from all the other services, this is a service though, however, that Mercy has done from the very beginning. It's not something new. Yeah. However, a lot of people are still not aware of yeah. that service. Now, why the lessening of the age, other than the being able to, to take yourself there? Is it preventative? Yes, exactly so. The, the 59 year old, we, uh -huh. the, the, the health of the 59 year old will not be the health of the population right now they're seeing. Yeah. Also, you, you know that we pay a per member mm -hmm. um, payment mm -hmm. from the NHIM model. And therefore, if we include younger 59 year olds, because there's now another area that they call young elderly, mm -hmm. they have all different oh, um, wow. descriptions. Anyway, the 59-year-old will be healthier, yeah. of course, and at a point that they could prevent end-stage diseases like renal failure and all the education they might need, yeah. the change to their lifestyle, and all of these things are important. Also, by pooling healthier people, mm -hmm. it, it, that's just pooling. Yeah. We, you know, so we have, we have a healthier population within... Yeah. This so if you start to manage your diabetes at 59, oh, yeah. right. then you have the renal failure right. at the 70 where uh, you may be seeing them. So, so we, need to, we need to, if I may, um, mm -hmm. point out that at the end of the day, our goal is to ensure that our patients have a one-stop shop, we want to call it. Mm -hmm. So in-house mm -hmm. you have the clinical service, you have a phlebotomy on site every morning, mm -hmm. you have your pharmacy on site. Um, you have a nutritionist mm -hmm. um, that's going to be there several hours per week. You mm -hmm. have the physiotherapist that's going to be there several hours per week. The social worker, if needs be. Yeah. And we are thinking along the lines of we may need to expand and add a few more things, but that's coming 
as the numbers <laughs> grow. Also, they already have a referral to internees yes. mm -hmm. in house yeah. established mm -hmm. already. Yeah. So that is important. Because it's primary as care. Well. I mean, you're not right. going there for right. surgery. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. It's primary it's care. It's your checkups and uh, your your basic uh, clinic type stuff yes, that exactly. you're seeing there. Now, what do you find to be uh, the greatest strain? You've already said it. Really, it's, it's getting people to adhere to medicine. Now, this is something that. Even the younger populations, doctors can't get them to finish their antibiotics, take them on time, or not take somebody else's medication and <laughs> continues on yes. and on and on and on. How are you be, uh, managing with uh, your population to be able to get them to adhere? That's a difficult challenge. Mm -hmm. And that is the reason why we first started out with the case manager social worker, because yeah. we have identified patients that needs that one-on-one -on -one with that Support. case worker yeah. um, to educate and for us to get a report back to understand what is really going on in the home. Yeah. We're not here to discriminate or lecture or, or yeah. punish anyone for what they're doing, but in to order to help it. and improve what they're getting. It's very important for patients to understand that from the time they walk into our gates at Mercy, all the services have no cost to them. Mm -hmm. It is free. However, cost us it is costing, <laughs> the cost comes your between... Your medicine is free. Right, it's costing... Your blood tests are free. Correct. Your checkup are free. Yes. Your, correct. But your physiotherapy will be correct. free. Your meal will be free. Your meal will be free. However, it does, it does have a huge cost, and of that course, cost is between course. Mercy and, and, yeah. and, and program NHI. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes we fall short and we have to lean on our donors yeah. um, to help meet that shortfall. And also what I would want to, to add and say is that in the last year, Dr. Omar Aviles has been working closely along with a geriatrician, doc, Dr. Foreman mm -hmm. from Kentucky. She's a professor. Yeah. And um, she, due to this contact, NHI, the NHI program itself has benefited in where we have been working along with Dr. Omar Aviles from Mercy and um, Dr. Foreman in looking at assessment tools for the elderly okay. and, um, and, and how we can improve on all these areas and guidelines for treatment because the, the pharmaceutical treatment of a patient, the elderly is very different than another age group. Yeah. There are no protocols in place saying that at certain ages, there's no need for medication anymore, and that sort of thing. So it's also to, we're working towards that, yeah. where the elderly takes less medication yeah. and does alternative, not alternative medicine, I must clarify, but yeah. other alternative interventions that will, will work. Yeah, yeah. Do we have a geriatrician in Belize? The Ministry of Health, their program has a geriatrician. Okay. Okay. I think it, over the last year, we um, he works. Or I think he works out of the Matron Roberts. Okay. However, working with Dr. Foreman and trying to get her to come in and do training workshops, yeah. we will be working closely with this geriatrician as yeah. well from the Ministry of Health because what we 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 know is that our other PCPs have a geriatric population as well. Of course. So mm -hmm. whatever is being implemented at Mercy, we can implement across the board. So yeah. the training is not only for the GPs from, from Mercy, okay. but we will open that up yeah. to everybody. Are you going to move, have a move where uh, persons of 59 and older who are accessing the other clinics are referred over to Mercy Clinic? We have or not still made open? that yeah policy decision yeah. as okay. yet. We are encouraging them to transfer. Yeah. You know, people fall in love with their doctors oh, yes. and they don't want to leave Dr. Aquaya, they don't want to leave Dr. <laughs> Crespo, and when they come they only want to see them, you know, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. So, um, we, but we have been working in the last few years to encourage them to yeah. voluntarily come over and especially now where there's a comprehensive package mm -hmm. yeah geared to, to, to fit their needs, it's important that they think about it, yeah. um, that we have space yeah. right now for registration. That's another thing. So you have about 2,000 members and keep on hearing, you're welcoming more. Yes. Yes. What's your capacity? <laughs> At 30 patients the, a day, that's already a lot. Right. Um, now, that the, now that we're going to be getting the entire building uh -huh. um, 
for clinical services. We, that's going to be opening up more spaces for mm. us for more consultation rooms, seating capacity, um, areas for the another internist office, mm -hmm. etc. Um, we have identified the current space um, for a population of 6,000. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. So which would mean that as we start at the clinic increasing growing. numbers, yeah. then the opening hours will then increase, staff members increase, because then we're going to have to probably operate on a, on a shift basis to accommodate our patients. Yeah, yeah. And we'd mentioned before that mobility can be an issue, even for physiotherapy. And we're not talking immobile, we're just talking basic movements, steps, climbing into a bus <laughs> or a taxi yes, right. can be hard. So uh, what about being able to assist in that? Is there a pickup service? Is there a, will, will we be moving in that direction? I mean, I know from, from experience with elderly people in my family, I had an aunt who used to take a, a step mm -hmm. stool with her everywhere, everywhere she went. She, goes, she couldn't yeah. climb into the bus or even a car. Mm -hmm. So um, what about long term, where you see with that? Okay, that is something that has been on the board from 2009. Yeah. I mean, we laid out a plan when we first started this discussion to go with um, yeah. NHI support. And that is still something that we, we have. Need to discuss for look, yeah. We, we, we yeah. It's on the table, we just need to pull it back and start looking at it. Yeah. As numbers increase, where do, we, where do we go? What do we do? Yeah. How do we get local transportation, city council to be involved? This is, mm -hmm. this is not, not only, only mercy. a mercy thing. It has to be That's a citywide right. thing where we have um, politicians involved, um, city council involved, the bus owners, taxi operators to, yeah. to come around. We're looking at the cost, because you have to remember that older persons are also living on a very tight budget yes. or no budget at all. Um, we are offering this service. The only thing that is a downside to us is our location. Yeah. We're not I in close proximity to a lot of them. Yeah. Um, but the area, I mean, if you have a, have a, get a chance to visit, the area is nice, it's comfortable, yeah. and a lot of people are transferring to come in. But that is an area that we have to look at, yeah. um, how we can get mobile mobilities for them to come in and also the adequate type of transportation mm -hmm. because i i having a mother who is disabled from forever moving my mom around when we used to move around going to different public places is a challenge mm -hmm. there were certain public places we couldn't take her yeah. because there was no way of getting her in or out and, and that is something I believe we, can, we have to address with different stakeholders. Yes. It's not only NHI, it's not only Mercy. Yes. And also looking at improving transportation yes. for the elderly, public transportation. I, there are some, I, think I have to Mandatory take public priority transportation yeah. all mm -hmm. the time yeah. when I travel between Belize City and Belmopan. And if sometimes it's hard for me to climb on these buses I said, imagine the, the elderly. Also, even with public transportation, there's like the elderly you not know, get preference to get on the bus first. Mm -hmm. Everybody push and shove. They're probably the last to get on mm -hmm. if they get on. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't know what the city transportation is, but yeah. I believe it reflects the, the same as the yeah. one that I need to take off then. Oh, hopefully the right people are hearing this too since you're in a public forum because you're right you can't be all mercy clinic it has to be uh, and there has been some advocacy work yeah. you know from other organizations but i think it needs a lot more and yeah. we really need to come together and work towards that because that that is indeed a challenge we wouldn't be able to go and see every homebound um, exactly. and you know and if there was some type of way that they can get to the clinic then yeah. that would be much easier yeah. um, but that is something that we, that, have, yeah. that we have on our plans to, to work yeah. as part of our expansion not in the very near future but yeah. working Maybe towards some that. Maybe donor is thinking of a disability bus they can do yes. it. I don't know about the few parts of you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, Everything comes with a cost. I'm, I'm it's, just giving it's, people suggestions. It's, it's when we sit and discuss yeah. all these things come up. <laughs> But, but we have to keep on out. reminding because we're um, all going to get there. Right, yes. But I want to I want to shift back because you spoke very very clearly about membership. So it doesn't mean that you just show up. You need to be a part of a registry. Right. Okay. Um, so talk to us about that process. Mm -hmm. I, I'm watching this now. I have my mom who's sixty something or eighty something, and I'm saying, okay, I'm going to take her to Mercy Clinic so she could get the nutrition, the physiotherapy, and everything else. 
So what we do is that right now we're embarking on a um, registration campaign where we're, okay. we, we have persons calling for um, uh, Belize district residents that are 59 years and older okay. and um, asking them that has a social security card mm -hmm. and asking, advising them that they qualify yeah. to be registered with MRSA because of their age mm -hmm. and if we can proceed in registering them. No one is being forced to but we're just encouraging them. The ones that are that are ac uh, um, accepting to be registered, um, their their social security card is registered into our system within 24 hours, and then they're activated with us. Okay. And then they need to come in or call our office to make an appointment. An appointment has to be made. It's not just we register you today and tomorrow you get to see the doctor because you do. We work on an appointment basis. Yeah. Um, we have three physicians in house, and a new patient takes a minimum of three hours from start to finish when mm -hmm. they first come in because they have to be triaged. Mm -hmm. They have to go through their full medical history with the physician and that is where it takes a little bit longer. Okay. Just the first time then, Just the first time. Yeah. And after that, they're, they're put on a one month, one month appointment yeah. if needs be. Other, if, other than that, if they're healthy or seem healthy, then they're, they're put on a two, three month appointment. Okay. It depends on what the doctor um, yeah. decides to do with that person. Yeah. But it is very important that people understand that the registration is not a walk-in, yeah. and you'll see the doctor right away. I believe we had some of those that occurred last week, and we explained to them the yeah. process, and we were able to give them appointments yeah. for a week week yeah. away. So it's not a walk-in. We need no. to make appointments. Yes. You need to register first. Register. You um, need to so have a social security system. card. Yes, you have to have a social security card, 59 and older. Older. Um, and you are eligible. And now including the nutrition component, uh, the Physical. Meals on Wheels continues, but you can't necessarily go in and get a meal anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and the physiotherapy. Now, the phys physiotherapy is directly tied to your doctor's recommendation? Correct. or okay. yes. So yeah. the physiotherapist is going to be there several hours per, per day, five days a week. I believe okay. it's four to five hours per day. Mm -hmm. um, and then the doctor is going to be making appointments with that physiotherapist for whom that they're going to be seeing, yeah. um, whether it be old patients or new patients. And we also have to bear in mind that this physiotherapist is also going to be going to the homes because oh. we currently have the, the outreach program yeah. or the homebound program that the doctors and nurses goes out to see on a monthly basis. Yeah. There's roughly about 50 or 60 of those. Yeah. So they are also going to be a part of it. So which is going to lessen the hours that the, the physiotherapist is going to be in-house. Yeah, because they're out seeing other patients as Correct. well. As you said, these changes start as of? August 1st. On Wednesday, yeah. right? Anything else you'd like to share with the public about uh, the work of the Mercy Clinic? Well, I would just like to say that we are grateful to the Sisters of Mercy who have enabled us to continue this mm -hmm. work, um, work that will continue to be their legacy mm -hmm. um, in, the Belize, in Belize City. Um, the values and uh, the tradition of mercy continues at the clinic yeah. um, through the staff and the board. And so we, we are grateful for that. And we want to encourage those who qualify to register to, to seek the services. Um, and so encourage them to, to register. Yeah. Also, I would like to add that um, donors and sponsors for mercy are always welcome to fit the needs that, that our program does not cover, yeah. you know? So I know that they, they, over the years, they have had many great donors and sponsors, and we um, would like to still encourage yeah. that, all right? Andrew, how can people help, or what area do you need the most assistance with? There's always assistance needed in, in finance, mm -hmm. um, or in kind, so mm -hmm. we're gonna be reaching out, um, and we're opening our doors, our telephone lines, and ask, asking people to call in, come in, visit, and make any sort of donation they like. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't matter how small, everything has, we're gonna be able to use. Yeah. Um, and it's very important for us to stress again that we are not closing our doors. In yeah. fact, we are expanding yeah. um, for the services, catering to the elderly population of Belize. Great. Well, thank you for stopping in and keeping us updated. Thank, thank you. you. Thank for you for inviting having us. us. All right. We're going to go ahead and take a break. And when we come back, we'll be getting all the details about the upcoming Costa Maya Festival. We'll see you.